That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Ah, the moon. Majestic celestial object. Just kidding, the moon is boring, Mars is way more interesting. So although I get red in the face just thinking about how this moon swatch mission to Mars made its way into my watch box, I think it's worth a retrospective. And while we're at it, an unboxing where we take a closer look. I'm the Timist. Grab a seat and let me explain. Now that you're comfortable, let me walk you through the story as I go about the business of unboxing this beauty. As many watch nerds will know, back in late March of 2022 during the Watches and Wonders event, Swatch announced that they were partnering with one of the brands that they own in order to release something pretty awesome, the Omega Swatch collab known as the Moon Swatch, featuring the iconic Speedmaster as their muse. We were told that the watch would be made of bioceramic, that the case design and dimensions would be exactly the same as the aforementioned Speedmaster, and that we'll be seeing 11 different colorways spanning all of the celestial bodies in our solar system, each one special in its own way. What's more, each example would be priced sub 260 US dollars, and that they'll be sold in swatch boutiques all over the world. This is all true, and so far, everything is fine. Now, I'll be honest, I lost my friggin' mind when I saw this because I love the Speedmaster design. It's amazing history, it's legacy with NASA, space and the moon, and how it saved the lives of the Apollo 13 astronauts. It's honestly one of the greatest watch-related stories of all time. And make no mistake, I knew I wasn't getting a real Speedmaster, but a fun little colorful cousin that could be worn casually whenever and wherever. At least until I would pick up the real Speedmaster. God knows when. But the point is, it was cool, it was fun, it was inexpensive, and I was all in. Apparently, so was the rest of the watch and non-watch world too, because madness ensued shortly thereafter. I mean, people were losing their minds left and right trying to figure out how to get one. Lines started forming outside of swatch boutiques all over the world. People with tents, chairs, reading material, food. It looked like something you'd expect to see from an Apple launch back in the day, or basically what happened when the Nintendo 64 came out. It was bananas. Ask anyone and they'll tell you the same thing. It's painfully obvious now that Swatch did not expect this level of interest and the madness this type of reception would bring with it. So, of course they didn't plan. Prime, train, build, stock, or deliver on anything even remotely passable as an okay launch. But more on that later. And there was me, sitting at this very computer that I'm editing this very clip you're watching right now, just reading about it. So, I picked up my phone, sent some texts to a few friends in the watch world, and their response was legit, hey, if you get one, let me know, I'm looking for one too. Well, there goes that plan. It got so bad, in fact, that Swatch made a statement saying, limit two per customer, and don't worry, these aren't limited edition watches, so you'll be able to buy them online later. Everybody just chillax. Okay, so that last part they didn't say, but... That's the vibe that they were putting out, again, in an effort to calm the masses. Then the actual launch day arrived, and Swatch updated the original statement and said they'd limit only one watch per customer, but that didn't help lower the number of watch craze fans at all. In fact, it got worse. Arguments, fights, and even use of weapons broke out in lines around the world. It is at this point where we upgrade the release from what was a fun, hype-fueled watch craze that was good for the industry a full-on hysteria. This was bad. And it got worse, from a business standpoint at least. Fast forward three months, it's now end of June of 2022, and the CEO of Swatch, Nick Hayek, sits down and does an interview with Fratello Watches. Let's recap what I've said up until this point before we dive into his interview. At the end of March, the Moon Swatch series is announced and this creates a huge buzz in the watch world. Shortly thereafter, they go on sale only at physical Swatch boutiques throughout the world, which at that time meant 110 locations worldwide. Mass hysteria, insane lines of thousands of people form, Swatch stores are understaffed, undertrained to deal with the physical and emotional distress that is dealing with thousands of eager watch nerds, the number of watches on hand for sale are grossly under what the public is expecting, and the day of the release, Swatch says you can only buy one. After standing in line for days, people walk away with nothing to show for it, fights break out, 
Riot Police is brought in, people get hurt, and SWAT says, relax, you can buy them online later, no biggie. Okay, back to the interview. The CEO says, quote, There's no emotion in online buying. The Moon Swatch is a carefully produced Swiss-made watch and not a commodity. After the whole world had to stay at home for two years because of COVID, it was about time to celebrate and to bring the people back on the streets, meet together, and revive the brick and mortar stores." End quote. So basically what we're told here is that don't mind what we said earlier about it being available online, because it won't be, because our watches are exquisite timekeeping instruments. So we want you to fully experience this buying endeavor by forcing you to open up Google Maps, searching for the nearest Swatch Boutique near you, and finding out, at least for me, because I live in Washington State, the nearest one is in Vancouver, the Canadian one. So that would mean two and a half hours of driving one way, crossing a border, and burning 140 miles of gas, again, one way, just so I can make a Swatch employee's life miserable by asking them, hi, yes, hello, uh, I'm from America, please, oh, please stop throwing things at me. Hey, listen, do you happen to have the moon swat? No, seriously, please stop throwing. Oh, no, hey, no, it's okay, no, no need for tears. Y y you know what? I, I don't even want it. I, I actually, I, I just dropped by to check in on you. See if you uh, need a snack, maybe a nap. So sorry about all this. And then after all of that, drive two and a half hours back, border crossing again, burn 140 miles worth of gas, but now also feeling horrible because A, I ruined a Swatch employee's day, and B, I wasted a day and now I'm beat, I'm hungry, and I also need to stop for gas. Oh, yeah, that's right. I also didn't get a moon Swatch. So, you know what? I said screw it. Clearly, Swatch mismanaged this whole release. Then they try to temper people's expectations by saying, chill, you can get it later, fam. And then three months later, they spun up a story on how a $260 plastic watch was a high-end haute horologie timepiece that was so worthy of itself, the company refused to rob you of the in-person experience. So they said JK on that. For people that dabble in watches, you know that this statement by the watch CEO is beyond comprehension. One, the moon swatch is not a work of art. Two, the watch does not showcase any mechanical or quartz breakthroughs. Three, bioceramic is a marketing term for nicer feeling plastic. And four, there are so many other watches within this price range that would absolutely dance the Romanian Hora around it. It's not even funny. Like, take this Timex chronograph for instance. Look at it. It's like a diet Daytona with a date for less than 200 bucks. Anyways, it was at this point where I had written off getting my hands on a moon swatch. Until my wife and I decided to celebrate our wedding anniversary in jolly old London. So we planned our trip, it's now end of July, and so we took a week off to proceed and check out all that Britain had to offer. Which amongst other things included way more swatch boutiques. So of course I caved and we decided to try our luck a second time in scoring a moon swatch. I'll spare you the anticipation. No, we did not find a moon swatch. We visited multiple locations, but two stand out for very different reasons. The first one, the more pleasant one, was the Swatch Boutique in London on Carnaby Street. Three employees, all friendly, all kind, and all very amenable. I told them we were visiting from Seattle, it's our anniversary, we're both watch geeks, and we're trying our luck in finding a moon swatch. They kindly told us that unfortunately they didn't have any in stock, and then we just proceeded to have a good chat about watches in general. Great people. Sad ending, but you know what? That's how it goes sometimes. The next location we went to was the Swatch Boutique in Covent Garden. It stands out because of a very different, very frustrating interaction, or lack thereof, between myself and the last remaining employee in the store. My wife and I had been rushing in a cab to get there before they closed. We managed to get dropped off fairly close. We ran to the store with 10 minutes to spare. Lo and behold, the door is closed, locked even, the lights are turned off, and in the middle of the store, I can see the lady vacuuming as she prepares to head out. To her right, I see a beautiful case, branding and all, full of every single Moonswatch version under the literal sun, including the sun. And all that separates me from getting my hands on one is a glass door and about five feet of physical distance. 
I knock on the door and wave at the lady, excited at the mere fact that I can actually see one of these watches in the reel for the first time ever. She looks up, she does this little grimace thing, I point at the case of moon swatches and then point my right index finger and sort of mime an invisible watch on my left wrist. She responds with a side to side head nod, points her index finger on her invisible watch and mouths, we're closed. To which I check my actual watch and go, there's seven minutes left. At which point she grimaces again, looks down and resumes her vacuuming. Hand to God, scene by scene, this is what happened. What I wanted to tell her is, lady, I don't live just around the corner. We flew 4,781 miles to get here. We're still very much jet lagged and you closing the shop early is lame. Why you gotta do me like this? But what I actually ended up doing is sit there for 10 seconds, sigh, shake my head realizing that I was wronged again missing out on the moon swatch, and then left tired, watchless, and hungry. So now you're probably asking yourself, okay, so then how did you get the moon swatch mission to Mars? Well, it's definitely not by going to the secondary resellers or gray market, that's for sure. How much are you selling the watches for? 1,000. What is the most amount of money that each of you would pay for a moon swatch on the secondary market? 600, maybe 400. 500, I think. Yeah, 500. At its peak, the mission to Mars was selling eight times over retail, hitting 2,000 plus dollars. And since I was already unhappy with how everything had transpired, I didn't bother. Now, let's fast forward a bit. It's now December and I'm scrolling through my Facebook feed when I see that a good friend of mine and colleague is spending her Christmas holiday vacation in Europe, doing a sort of country hopping with her husband, checking out the sights, the sounds, and the delicious food that the continent has to offer. When suddenly I have an idea. Hmm. I wonder if she's visiting the watch motherland. So scrolling through the posts, I see that yes, she is in fact visiting Switzerland and that she's there now. So I quickly scramble, jump on Facebook Messenger and kindly ask her if she's willing to see if there are any nearby SWAT stores. And if so, if she could possibly find me either the Mercury edition or Mars edition. She kindly replies back and says that she's more than happy to look. 20 seconds later, she says, hey, there's a SWAT store 150 feet from our hotel. My heart dropped. My pulse quickened. Maybe there's still hope, I say to myself. It turns out the location was closed for the day, but once they opened the following morning, she'd drop in and check. And she did. I received this photo of the majestic aforementioned case, which houses all the watches. And not only that, but they had a mission to Mars in stock. So after some kind words were exchanged, nine months after its release, I finally got my hands on the moon swatch mission to Mars timepiece. Even better, purchased by a good friend from the land where it originated, Geneva, Switzerland. Of course, I still had to wait for their vacation to wrap up, which took us into January of 2023, but that only gave me time to find a suitable, comfortable, and very well matching, I might add, Oris rubber strap. It's been a long journey. It actually feels like we've been to the literal moon and back. But after a disastrous product launch, insane reseller gray market prices, hollow promises and recanting of initially made statements wrapped in the thinnest of excuses, and a sad incident involving a lady, a glass door, and a vacuum, my friend came through and brought me a watch that now carries with it a crazy story that will forever be remembered as the moon swatch mania, and I love it. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this unboxing retrospective. Thanks for hanging out. Drop any questions in the comments you have below. Be well, and I'll catch you in the next one.